This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to each and to all this morning. Wherever you are at this very moment in life and location, you are welcome here. We are so glad that you've come to be part of this worshiping community at Emmanuel, and we hope you'll help us get to know you. If you are a first time or returning visitor among us, simply click on the link on the worship page to let us know how we can help connect you to the life of the church. As always, we encourage you to take a look at the announcements listed in your bulletin. There are so many opportunities for ongoing small groups and community connection, and you are welcome to join small groups, whether or not you've ever attended before. We invite you to use the link on the worship page to sign up for Emmanuel's weekly ePresence email newsletter. It's a great way to stay up to date on events and community prayer celebrations and concerns. One of the annual events we always enjoy at Emmanuel is the auction. And while it didn't happen in person this year, I'm very happy to report that the total amount is over $50,000. Amazing. The exact amount will be listed in the e-press this week. If you're looking for a spiritual home right now, a place to ask questions, and a community with whom you can speak an experience of the holy and serve the God who is love, there is a place for you here. As we center ourselves and open our hearts to God in worship today, remember that you can email your personal prayer concerns to us in the church office. And you can also join us for sharing of celebrations and concerns in small groups on Zoom at 11 a.m. each Sunday. Just use the sign-on link and password from your ePresence newsletter. If you're new to Emmanuel today and hope to join in the Zoom, just email us at office at ipcmclean.org. One last important reminder for those who have officially joined Emmanuel as voting members of the congregation. Our semi-annual congregational meeting will take place on Sunday, June 14th at 1130 a.m. It will be held online via Zoom. A link to the meeting will be provided by email a few days before that meeting. If we have technical problems on Zoom and the meeting cannot proceed, we will try again at 5 p.m. on the same day, June 14th. The purposes of this meeting are to elect members of session class of 2023, planned giving committee class of 2022, and nominating committee class of 2021. Also, we will be voting on the proposal to call the Reverend Susan Grayson as associate pastor of Emmanuel Presbyterian Church. And we will transact any other business which may properly come before the meeting. If you are a voting member of Emmanuel, that is, you have been formally received into Emmanuel's membership, please attend the meeting on June 14th and vote. And if you would like to join Emmanuel as an official member, please contact me. If you are concerned about having online access to this meeting, please email emmanueltechhelp at gmail.com for assistance or call. For other questions, call or email Clerk of Session, Dana Pratt. See the church directory for contact information. With joy, let us worship God. Will you pray with us? Spirit of the living God, we come together to worship you today. Move us and inspire us. Teach us how to listen to each other's stories as we encounter the story of your love in scripture today. Draw us close to you today and every day. Amen. Amen. Come, thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father of glorious, or of victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of day. Spirit of holiness, on us descend. To the great one in three, eternal praises be, and evermore, thy sovereign majesty, may we in glory see, and to eternity, no. 
Holy One, your very being defies our logic, our this or that thought, our categories of opposition. And so we give you thanks for your triune reminder that we can be so much more than just parties in juxtaposition, that we can live into your yes and way of being. Today, we need that reminder more than ever that there are other ways of being in solidarity, community, and discipleship. When we get stuck in the binary, in the well-worn ways, keep breathing new life, holy triune one. Keep birthing creative possibilities in our midst. Keep near to us so that we might stay near to this hurting and beloved world that you keep calling your own. Amen. Beloved of God. Let us worship together. of you. As we grow aware of your abiding presence, we sing holy, holy, holy. We speak of you as triune, one and three and three and one, to try to capture that you are beyond, beside, within, and between us. You are. We cannot fully grasp the depth and breadth and height and width of your love, but when we are most in tune with you, we know that it calls us out of self and into a life lived in the way that Jesus modeled for us. We must confess that we do not always live in that way. Our petty preoccupations, our resentments and grudges, our unconscious privilege, and carefully guarded sense of our own righteousness get in the way of fully living as you would have us fully live. Standing in your holy presence, we know two things. We cannot fix ourselves, and that your love has the power to transform. So Creator, Redeemer, and sustainer, keep working your power to transform in us and in our world. People of God, you are forgiven and freed. Go forth remembering your baptism, that there is nothing too grand to separate you from God. No sin that could ever divide God's grace from you eternally. But also go forth remembering that God's grace is freely given to those who ask for it, to those who repent, to those who acknowledge and lament their participation in sinful deeds and even more sinful systems. We are forgiven people. 
Let us begin this day with that freedom and God's redemption. Hear the sound of love poured out. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our, our mouths, mouths will, will declare, declare your, your praise. praise. Praise the Lord. The Lord's, Lord's name, name be praised. praised. Hey everybody, it is time for the message for young disciples, the kids sermon. So for all the young people in your houses, now's the time to gather them front and center. And today we're going to be talking about the Trinity. So there's a special concept in our church, in the Christian church, that's called the Trinity. You've probably heard the word before. The first three letters are T-R-I. So I want you to take a second and think about any other words that you know that are that begin with T-R-I. T-R-I. I can think of two off the top of my head. I'm thinking of triangle and tricycle. You might be able to think of more. So share it with your family and friends if you do. But what are the two things that those have in common? And what does what does the prefix T-R-I mean? It means three. A tricycle has three wheels. A triangle has three corners. And we have something called the Trinity, which the Trinity is how we think about God. We have God, the parent, who we often pray to. We have God, the child, who is present for us in Jesus. And then we have a third part of God, which is which we talked about last weekend, which is the Holy Spirit. And so we pray to one God, but God is present in these three different concepts. So there are different ways to access God. And what does that kind of mean for our daily lives? What I've been thinking about, a very important thing, since everybody is at home, is ice cream. So I want you to take a second and think about your two favorite types of ice cream. I probably would have to go with chocolate and something else. But for the sake of the example today, I'm going to go with chocolate and vanilla. So... What does the number three teach us about life? And we're going to look at ice cream to, to teach us the lesson. So maybe you finished your dinner and your mom says, your dad says, your grandparent says, you can have some ice cream. And you can have either chocolate or vanilla. And you're like, those are both great options. And then they and but but I'm gonna have to pick either chocolate or vanilla. It might be a hard choice. And then they say, or you can have both. Now, is both either chocolate or vanilla? No, it's something totally new and totally different. So a lot of times in life we are presented with two sides of something. It's either this or that. This is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. This person is right, this person is not. We're presented with two choices. And sometimes one of those choices, you know, could be the right thing or could be a, the clearly correct thing. But oftentimes, when we look at the world and there's a problem that needs to be solved, 
there is one choice, the other choice, and then there's also a third choice, right? There's a third choice which maybe takes some parts of one decision and some parts of the other choice and, and puts them together. So sometimes we can think that we might have to choose chocolate or vanilla, that things might be black or white, but it's our job because we know that God is present in threes, right? It's our job as people and as people who love and as people who love as Christians to find the third option, to say, well, it doesn't have to be this or that. What's something else? What's something new that I could make, that I could create or think about or that I could collaborate with my friends or family on and think about it in a new way and bring something new into existence, right? So it really fosters relationship and talking and ideas and creativity. So God is present in, in threes, right? He's not oh God, she is not either this or that. So, so today we really remember the Trinity. We think about how it's important in our lives. And the next time you eat ice cream, I want you to think about the Trinity and how God is present in the third option, not either this or that. So have a wonderful Sunday with your families. I hope you're all doing great. And let's have a quick prayer, and then we'll, we'll move on with the service. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful presence that you have in the Trinity, in God the Parent, God the Child, and God the Holy Spirit. We're grateful to know that you are a creative God, and that you are always encouraging us to relate with each other and with you and look for a third option. In Jesus' name we pray. Help us to recognize that the next time we eat ice cream. Amen.
Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, giver of life, breathe into us that we may hear a word of truth this day. Draw us into communion, enable us to love, conspire to make us one with you and with each other for this world you so deeply love. Amen. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly, far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. And may the gospel be more to us than mere words. May your Holy Spirit produce in us strong conviction. Amen. Over these last three months or so, I have come to really appreciate, and if I'm honest, to be somewhat frustrated by the power and limitations of teleconferencing tools like Zoom and other technology to help you and I connect to people. It's a wonderful thing that we can create a video of a worship service and put it on YouTube or Facebook so that we can have an experience of watching it and that we can see and hear each other in real time in Zoom small groups and, and meetings or through FaceTime and other apps. I'm abundantly grateful for this, but as marvelous as these tools are for connecting, I often come away from my experience on them hungering for more. Here's why, I think. They are by nature two-dimensional, horizontal and vertical, height and length, sight and sound, and human beings exist in at least three dimensions. There is more to us than you can see on a flat screen or a moving picture, more than just height and breadth. There's also depth. More than body and mind, but also spirit. More than just seeing and hearing, but touch and taste and smell. Embracing and being embraced, understanding and being understood, being fully human and dynamic relationship with others, all of this requires more than just two dimensions on a screen. We hunger for more. That said, we will no doubt for the health and safety of many people within and beyond this congregation continue to have to use screens for Sunday worship for some time to come. We want to make our service accessible to you. What makes our connection via screens work for the moment is that most of us already know each other in more than two dimensions. When we listen to and look at each other on a phone or a computer, we get that we are speaking to a real human being with a backstory and that helps us to understand them. We know them in some depth. It's that longing to be with people in more than just two dimensions that first drew me to our passage from the Apostle Paul and his letter to the Ephesians. I couldn't help but notice that he prayed for the church at Ephesus that they may, with all the saints, have the power to comprehend what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge so that they might be filled with all the fullness of God. What Paul asks for them is an understanding of God and one another and everyone else, what he calls earlier in the passage, every family in heaven and on earth, that is deeper than what you can find on a screen, more than some kind of cardboard cutout or caricature. There's mystery and complexity at work in the living divine and in every human being we encounter, something that resists being flattened out. But we human beings are good at flattening things out reducing the living divine and other people and ourselves into something more manageable. 
It's a natural human impulse, but it doesn't serve us well. So Paul talks about the dimensionality, the, the breadth and length, the height, the depth. There's never been a better time than now to be challenged by Paul's prayer that we have the power to know the breadth and length, the height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that we might begin to be filled with all the fullness of God. The extrajudicial killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery and the way our country has exploded over these past two weeks in protests and riots have made it clear that it is well past time for us to move beyond a flattened two-dimensional understanding of others as we consider and respond to the reality of systemic racial injustice in our nation. The breadth and the length, the height and the depth of it. It all begins, I think, with the recognition that racial injustice exists in society and in our criminal justice system, full stop. Racial injustice exists in our society and in our criminal justice system. Not, well, sure, the problem exists, but what about? No. The first step is simply acknowledging deep in our guts that racial injustice is an issue that we all need to own and respond to. Part of the way that injustice plays itself out is that people of color are often treated as two or even one dimensional. The recent murders and protests have made the problem seem a bit more urgent perhaps, but over the years I have heard, and I hope you have too, story after story after story told by African American people of all walks of life and socioeconomic status, senators and sanitation workers, doctors and drifters, preachers, professors and professional, work, uh, professional athletes, grocery store clerks and, and nursing assistants about how they and their dearest loved ones have been treated as two-dimensional. Stopped, harassed, and or killed for running while black, driving while black, birding while black, shopping while black, entering or living in or sleeping in their own homes while black because they somehow fit the description of a criminal. Talk about two-dimensional with even a cursory knowledge of how African Americans have been treated over the past 400 years, you might begin to understand how, given the past couple of months of the African American community suffering disproportionately more illness and death and economic consequence due to COVID-19 than other races, coupled with the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, tensions might just begin to boil over regarding injustice. Thankfully, a whole host of people have come forward, including very recently the former Commandant of the Marine Corps, Robert Neller, to assert, we cannot be silent. We have to address racial injustice. And as a friend of mine in law enforcement said, there's not a police chief in this country that doesn't realize in their guts that things need to change. While we're on the topic of law enforcement, it can and I think has to be said that law enforcement is not easy work in the best of circumstances. And the people who serve in that capacity are more than flattened out stereotypes. They are like the rest of us, three dimensional human beings who deal with implicit bias and learn fear and are shaped by experience. For every instance of overreach, there are more examples of doing it right. And in the past two weeks, during riots and looting, some officers have been shot and killed by bad actors in crowds. That's true, but none of it means we get to avoid the hard work of addressing racial injustice, which is really only just beginning right now. The work, I mean. So what is the way forward after acknowledging injustice? That's a question fit for a series of sermons and a lifetime of advocacy, but let's begin here. Number one, I think recognizing that there's not a person we meet who exists only in one or two dimensions is a good start. 
No one is a caricature. We're human beings with human experiences and joys and hopes and fears and breadth and length and height and depth and backstories and families. It's Pride Sunday today. And on a day like today, I give thanks for the progress that has been made in welcoming and advocating for the LGBTQ community in our country over the last 30 years or so. What empowered people to speak up and work towards inclusion is really knowing people in more than one or two dimensions. Knowing them as our friends, our co-workers, our sons and daughters and siblings, our fellow children of God. It helps to know one another in more than one or two dimensions. When it comes to race, our congregation is, to put it mildly, not the most diverse group in the world. So after some further education as to how we can really listen and speak in ways that help and not harm, it is my hope and intention that we will begin a new effort to establish some conversations with African American congregations and their members. The good news is that a yearning to do this work is in the DNA of this congregation and over the years we have made more efforts than many towards these sorts of projects. From our shared ministry with Garden Memorial to the relationships formed through our couple of decades with the Dreamers to the visit we had from Brian Stevenson 18 months ago and our civil rights trip to Birmingham and, and Montgomery last November. Number two, I love how the Apostle Paul starts his prayer for the Ephesians with these words. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Every family, not just my own tribe, my own party, my own country and its citizens, my own race, but every family. It should go without saying that every family and every human life matters. But that's not always the way life plays itself out. Which means, in the way of Jesus, we have a special responsibility to speak up on behalf of and reach out to those who are consistently treated as if their lives matter less. I have been haunted by a cartoon that I saw this week, which showed the shepherd of Jesus' parable in Luke 15, reaching over a precipice to, to try to help the lost and hurting sheep, the one lost and hurting sheep, and the other 99 sheep are holding signs that say, all sheep matter. Sure, but the shepherd is trying to help the one who is in danger right now. Envisioning Paul bowing his knees before the Father, before whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name, I hold in mind the image of police officers humbly taking a knee in front of protesters, and the commissioner of the NFL coming out just the other day and finally admitting the league was wrong to punish players who took a knee in peaceful protest of police brutality. I think, too, of the fact that we are all called to humility in the presence of the living divine. Three, when I think of Paul's prayer that, that Christ might take root in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love, the image of a restaurant in D.C. comes to mind. Just a day or two after its reopening, looters shattered the glass storefront. As the owners boarded over the glass, they spray-painted hearts with and these words, our doors are closed, but our hearts remain open. When I saw that image, my heart swelled. And I thought, this is the way of Jesus in action. Not responding in kind, but with kindness and an open heart. Only someone who is rooted and grounded in love can respond to violence and destruction with kindness. How can we learn to honor the pain of others and to respond to that pain from a centered, rooted, and grounded place 
rather than escalating violence. That's a task for all of us. And prayer and seeing things and people in more than two dimensions helps. Four. I think finally of Paul's prayer that his readers might be strengthened in their inner being through the Spirit. And I recall that today is Trinity Sunday. This is a day to internalize the truth that God is not just beyond us as our parent and creator and not just beside us as our friend and redeemer, but also dwells within us as the Spirit which leads us out of ourselves into service and into bearing the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. It's the Spirit that is the living divine moving in and through us that enables us to bear the fruit that a time like this calls for so desperately. There's a book that I read with some regularity in a 12-step program that I'm a part of. And in that book, there are the following sentences. When therefore we were exposed, we were approached by those in whom the problem had been solved. There was nothing left for us but to pick up the simple kit of spiritual tools laid at our feet. We have found much of heaven and earth and have been rocketed into a fourth dimension of which we had not even dreamed. When I think of the challenge that we face in this moment in time, I think of the need to pick up those simple spiritual tools that Jesus left for us to let the Spirit work in and through us in times which call for the bearing of fruit. And to understand that other people, all other people we meet, exist more in more than one or two dimensions. It is only in that way that we will be rocketed into a fourth dimension and beyond. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. This is the table where God's grace meets us in daily bread. The same daily bread that we pray for as Jesus taught us. This is our dinner table where Christ is the host. The same table where we share wine and laughter with friends. The same table where we feed our children and dive into schoolwork. This is the table of pride where we give thanks for who we are and whose we are. And this is the table of grief, where we remember that Black lives matter 
that love can overcome our prejudices and that God keeps making a way out of no way. And so we gather here. Here we remember the challenges, parables, and prayers that Jesus taught us so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we might be remembered here. What part of you needs remembering today? What are you confessing here so that God's wholeness might enter in? What in the world around you are you asking God to remember? How are you willing and able to participate in the holy remembering as the spirit works right here and right now to mend our brokenness through this feast? where all are truly welcome. Here, together, we give thanks for this meal, where Christ is our host. Will you pray with us? Holy One, you teach us that you are love and that you are the beginning and the end. We know and trust that your love is enough. So sustain us on good days and tough days, that we might share with each other day in and day out, your love. Grounded in that love, we're able to examine our hearts and to ask you to enter in. Centered in you, we are able to confess and repent and take steps in the direction of wholeness once again. And so we give thanks to you, risen and still rising God, as we remember Jesus today, for his life, death, and resurrection continue to shape and challenge and change us. We give you thanks that your resurrection story unfolds even here and now around us and within us. And as you invite us to taste and see, we ask that you might help us to know you as well more deeply at this table. Remember us, we pray and nourish us at your table today that we might work with you for the coming kingdom of heaven on this good earth. We pray these things in your beloved name. Amen. In Mark chapter 14, we hear that on the night when Jesus was betrayed to the governing authorities, first he had supper with his disciples. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread And after giving thanks, he blessed it, broke it, and said, take, eat, this is my body. Do this, remembering me. And in the same way, when the supper was over, Jesus took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out in my name for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Amen. Amen. For everyone born, a place at the table. For everyone born, clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born, a star overhead. And God would delight when we are creators of justice and joy. And peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy. For all genders to a place at the table, revising the roles, deciding the share with wisdom and grace. Dividing the power for all genders to a system that's fair. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice. 
just enjoy For LGBT A place at the table A covenant shared A welcoming space A rainbow of race And gender and color For LGBT The chalice of grace And God will delight When we are creators of justice And joy Compassion and peace Yes, God will delight When we are creators of justice Justice and joy Justice and joy Justice and joy Justice and joy, justice and joy. Holy One, thank you for feeding us at this meal, nourishing us at your table. Hear us now as we pray for our community, our world, and our own selves. Holy One, we pray for the day when justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We pray for the coming of your kingdom of heaven on this earth and for us to learn our parts in co-creating that coming kingdom. Teach us to make room and space for each other. Teach us to care for one another and to listen whenever your children are hurting until that holy day when all are fed and clothed and freed and housed, recognized as beloved by you. We join our hearts with the psalmist, singing for the day when righteousness and peace shall kiss. We pray, God, that you would join our hearts to Christ's own, that we might ache at the suffering we see and experience, and grow in tenderness and compassion. Enlarge our desire to listen and understand and expand our hope for the transformation of this world and the transformation that we need internally and within our systems. And until that day comes, God of agape, God of shalom, we pray that you will not let our restless hearts seek only peace at the expense of justice, and that your spirit will not stop unsettling us, blowing in and through, and even in spite of us, until all of your children are able to live in your agape and shalom, blessed by your loving kindness to share in kinship and community as one people, your beloved people. Hear our prayers, Holy One for those close to our hearts and those far away, for those we hold dear and those we long to know better, for those we will never know, but who you know and love. Hear our prayers for challenge and change, for restructuring and community. Hear our prayers for wholeness and healing, for life and breath and being, Hear the words we utter and the prayers that ache in us, for which there are no words. Help us to find words when they're needed and to rest in the quiet when that's needed too. Help us to find you. Help us to seek you and know you. That your spirit would guide our conversations, our thoughts and our actions today and every day. Strengthen our inner being, root us deeply in you, ground us in your love. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Life and bringing life.
like our parent, firm and caring, urging us to do what's right. As your children in your image, we will sing and serve and pray. God beyond us, watching o'er us, give us grace to trust your way. God, we know you as the Savior, love embodied, only Son. Friend of sinners, broken bodied, you embrace the wounded ones. Welcomed by you in our weakness, we will tend the weak ones too. God beside us, walking with us, Help us do what love would do. God, we know you as the Spirit, wisdom's insight, holy far. Wind that blows the way you want to, prompt and prod us, guide and inspire. Blessed by gifts that you have given, bearing fruit, we are made whole. God within us, living through us, use us for your kingdom's goal. God, we know you in the triune, three in one and one in three. Dance together, open-hearted, making space the Trinity. At your core there is a sharing in such love, divinity. God between us, you unite us, fit us for community. Perhaps there's no better benediction on a Sunday like today, than the charge and benediction that the Apostle Paul delivered to the church at Ephesus. For this reason, he wrote, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through God's Spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and height and length and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to God, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we ask or imagine, to God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and ever. Amen.